The Isley Brothers stand out as one of the most successful musical groups of all time. How many of you remember It's Your Thing, Summer Breeze, For the Love of You, and Harvest for the World? And that's just a few of their many hits. Their talent, unique sound, and prolific songwriting has led to a career spanning six decades. The Isleys started out as a gospel group in the 1950s in Cincinnati, Ohio. They were a vocal trio then, consisting of Ronald Isley and his two brothers, O'Kelly and Rudolph. After a few modest chart successes, they finally hit with a song they wrote called Shout. Younger brother, Ernie Isley, who started playing drums at the age of 12, performed his first live gig with the group in 1966 and helped usher in a new sound for the band when he played bass on the Isley smash, It's Your Thing. Ernie would go on to pin hits like Fight the Power, Voyage to Atlantis, Footsteps in the Dark, That Lady, and many, many others. Last year, the Isley Brothers were inducted into the St. Louis Walk of Fame, having made this city their home. And we are privileged to have Mr. Ernie Isley in the studio with us today to talk about the Isley's incredible legacy and upcoming concerts. You're looking pretty good for 55. <laughs> hey, man, hey. You lived in Cincinnati. Yes, that's where uh, I was. Then went to Jersey. Yes. And somehow you, you've lived in St. Louis for more than two decades. Yeah. Tell me that story. Oh, well, you know, you got the, well, you had. The uh, the Rams here. Uh, <laughs> they won the we were, Super Bowl yeah, when we first got here. 1999 or yeah. 2000. Yeah, and of course, you know, you're, the Cardinals always represent well. And um, the... Uh, so you moved because you liked our sports yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The, the food, you know, the ribs, uh, any guns. What's uh, it, what was it like being in a band with your older brothers and growing up with such talent in the house? Um, that was normal, actually, because it was family first and foremost. And uh, the most surprising thing about it, most exciting thing was to go somewhere to a theater and the lights go down and it's a bunch of strangers and my three brothers come out and, you know, take the roof off the room. That was an amazing thing to see. And then they, right after that show, to be backstage and they say, hi, Ernie. I'd be like, wow. <laughs> so, that, you know, that was always exciting who, to who, do that. And who said that? All of them. Uh -huh. all, Kelly, Rudolph, and Ronald, all of them said that. I thought it was the ladies that said, hey, Ernie. Oh, no, no, because <laughs> I would have been eight, nine years old when it started. Well, you were 14 when yeah. you first played your live, uh, live gig with yeah. the Isley Brothers. Yeah. And somehow you ended up playing with Martha and the Vandellas that night, too. How yeah. did that come about? Uh, it turns out that they didn't have a drummer. And, uh, you know, we had just, uh, Isley's had performed before them. And so uh, that was a real thrill, but it was a challenge to play the drums and not get up and start dancing when they're singing Dancing in the Streets, because, you know, they had the place rocking Philadelphia, PA, Baltimore, and DC, you know? Wow. And that you was playing great. drums on that? Yeah, yeah, for them, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hear you call your guitar, which you have here, if you can um, talk to me about that, a, a zeal? Zeal Stratocaster, uh, I have three of them. This is Zeal number two. Uh, and uh, Z-E-A-L, mm -hmm. it has a hummingbird next to the Z. Uh, Mother of Pearl, two white doves of peace at the 12th fret. A hand carved roses, my initials E-I on this one. Um, they're out of the Fender Custom Shop. Uh, everybody that sees them, uh, you know, marvels at them, and um, they are, frankly, the oh. best looking instruments that ever uh, have come out of Fender. It is They're very proud of them. Indeed, a great looking yeah. instrument there. Yeah. Uh, what does zeal mean? Oh, that's that thing that lives inside you. That's your life. 
that's your uh, your spirit. Um, when you there's something you want to do, like if you have a goal, such as um, if you're at a pool table and there's a shot you're trying to make, and you know something inside you tells you you're going to make it, and you take the shot and it goes in. That's zeal. Uh, you've seen it demonstrated really with athletes, uh, with the, the likes of uh, LeBron James, mm -hmm. Serena Williams, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. You know, so you've seen that the idea of zeal demonstrated. It's something that's inside you. It's an a, a inner light that everybody that's alive has. Now, are you, you're the youngest, right? Or Marvin. Nixon, the youngest. Marvin, Marvin is the youngest yeah. in the mm -hmm. uh, you. You came along and you wrote a number of, of hits for the Isley Brothers, and a lot of people don't know that. Like, some of the biggest hits that everyone out there knows. You, you've written oh, those. Yeah, yeah. I did a little something, something on that regard. Now, my brother thinks you guys are the GOAT, and I do too. Uh, mm -hmm. Just one of the greatest of all time mm -hmm. groups. And I usually can identify, now that I've done my research, I can identify. Uh, some of the music based on the, the first few chords. Can you play a few uh, things and let me test this knowledge here? Uh, Is that that's your thing? It's your thing? It's not? Fight the power. Fight the power. <laughs> you got me, okay. All right. Another one? one? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I can't see. Footsteps in the footsteps in the dark. Yeah, footsteps in the dark. Um, well, another one. And where'd that come from? Where the inspiration for that Oh, footsteps in the dark. Song? Yeah. Uh, you know, we just uh, when you wrote that. Yeah, when, when, say. when you write it, it's you you find a a piece of melody or lyric or something like that, and uh, you latch hold to it and you uh, sort of see it through. So. Um, uh, the song itself, uh, if it was, you know, that simple to just plug in mm. and, and extract it, great. But uh, you do have to uh, give it some thought, give it some time. And it's always a pleasant experience when you capture it and then uh, and it play, it, play, yeah, play, <laughs> play it for the brothers. Yeah. Like, yeah, what you know. else you got? You got something yeah. else? Um, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> When will there be yes. harvest a harvest? Of harvest for the world. Harvest yeah. for the world. You're One good. of my favorites You're of good. all time. <laughs> Let, let's go back in history a little bit. Uh, this here is an, is an old album of mm -hmm. Nat King Cole's, mm -hmm. um, re released in 1963. Mm -hmm. And something stands out about this album. Mm -hmm. And a few years later, the Isaac Brothers had yeah, an album. Uh, Motown. Mm -hmm. From Old Town, mm -hmm. and it's, you want to explain what oh. what what stands out about these two well, albums you know, and what was going on in history in terms of the crossover? Yeah, um, the problem with trying to cross over as black artists back oh, well, in the early well, you 60s. know, like at that time, uh, that uh, when you were trying to sell records, uh, the companies were aware that if you tried to sell it uh, in certain markets, particularly in the southern United States, that there would be uh, like a block because, oh, Nat King Cole, skin tone, or the Isaac Brothers, he's, he's skin black tone. and yeah. putting his face so on they, the cover. So what they would do is they would take a photograph like that and put that on the front and say, Isaac Brothers, and then on the back you might see a smaller version of the actual artist. Yeah. So your picture is on the back, yeah. but not on the front. Right, oh, right. And Isley Brothers. Right, and so album. people, yeah. So people, <laughs> people would know the music, as they do, you know, but they don't necessarily know the artist. So when you say, you know, you made me wanna kick my heels up and so I'm like, oh, Isley Brothers. But if you saw that they were black, it might be, or it, you know, 
So maybe it won't go pop. Yeah, maybe, maybe it, it may, may, maybe it won't. But it's, that didn't stop it from being a hit. That didn't stop Twist and Shout from being a hit. That didn't stop This is a Heart of Mine from being a hit. And of course, as you came forward in the history of the country, where some of that stuff uh, sort of backed off a bit, mm -hmm. then you could actually have a picture of uh, the Isley Brothers, like on. Um, it's your thing cover or uh, the three plus three cover. Uh, so that was just, just a political uh, and, thing that the companies uh, being aware of that did. And you guys did this uh, in the short time or they before you actually became a full yes, fledged that was member like of the group. But you, they were only at Motown for a short time, right? Yes, yes. And a lot of fans have wondered, and I saw social media, I wonder why over the years, uh, the Isley Brothers had never appeared on any of the Motown specials. Well, uh, they did do This A Heart Of Mine, and um, they uh, make a long story like short. Like Motown 25 or yeah, something well, like that. Yeah, you know, at the time it was like, well, do you want to do that? And they were like, mm. <laughs> because get on there and time. come on there and do This A Heart Of Mine? Well, <laughs> no, you know, so, but but see, the thing, the thing with that is that, uh, uh, we still are represented well mm -hmm. by that song. And um, of course, we're proud to yeah. be a part of the Motown And legacy. you also represented well at the um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame when you were inducted yeah, in 1992. Yeah, in 1992, yeah. By Little Richard. Yeah, which is wonderful. <laughs> that had to be fun. They go Good back golly, a long, Miss Molly. They go back a long ways <laughs> with him. And, uh, you know, they both in, you know, like a mutual admiration society. Mm -hmm. And it was really nice for him to do that. And uh, that was a great night. Yeah, and, and that was with Rudolph, uh, O'Kelly, Marvin, and your cousin, um, that would have been, Chris uh, Jasper, uh, correct? For, for all the Isley Brothers? Ronald. Yeah, that would have been uh, at the, for say, the, all the Isley Brothers, that would be Kelly, Rudolph, Ronald, Vernon, Ernie, Marvin, and Chris Jasper. But I say all of them. I do have to ask you before we go a little bit about uh, Jimi Hendrix, mm -hmm. and I know you get that a lot, um, because of how famous Jimi became mm -hmm. uh, after playing with the Isley Brothers. When you guys met Jimi, he didn't have a guitar and didn't no. have a place to stay. No. So who was it that said, this guy needs to come with us? <laughs> well, uh, Kelly and Ronald, um, uh, make a long story short, they found him in Greenwich Village in New York. Mm -hmm. and. Um, he had him play for them a bit, you know, in less than three minutes. It's like, we gotta hire this guy. So he got hired, but he didn't have a place to stay. So just to be impractical, it's like, all your worldly goods here, you come, we got a spare bedroom in my mother's house. So he came uh, to uh, Inglewood, New Jersey, and he was in a uh, spare bedroom with a brand new Fender guitar that they got him, and he was, this is like March of 1963. He was a star of the band before the first rehearsal was over. Uh, the way he played, so many arrangements of the songs were altered to have more guitar. And uh, he was obviously, uh, I, I was 11 years old at the time. He was obviously a tremendous Incredible he was. Talent. I love the story you tell about the, the seeing the Beatles for the first time, yeah. and uh, a few days later, one of your brothers said, uh, hey, they got two guitar players, yeah. but we got Jimmy. But we got Jimmy. <laughs> and when he I said, but, but we, and he did it just like that, but we got Jimmy. And when he said, but we got Jimmy, I looked over at Jimmy, and Jimmy was grinning ear to ear at that remark, because it was true. What do you think was going on in his head at this Ooh, point? Oh, I would, I would think, you know, like the Isley Brothers had Shout and Twist and Shout. Mm -hmm. Those two songs the Beatles were performing mm -hmm. before they came to the United States. What do you think about their performance of Oh, that was, that was great because uh, the kids on the playground came to me and said, you know, the Beatles took your brother's song. Said, no, they didn't. They obviously listened, and I'm glad they did it, uh, and uh, ran into uh, Paul McCartney a few years ago, and we embraced each other, and we're both yelling in each other's ear, and I said, you know, Paul, you, Ringo, George and John, you guys are wonderful. And he said, Ernie, if it were not for the Isley Brothers, the Beatles would still be in Liverpool. <laughs> and then he went on stage and said that in the microphone. Um, and I ran into Ringo at the Rock 
uh, when we got the uh, Lifetime Achievement Grammy Award. And Ringo said, Ernie, you guys, the Isley Brothers, help us hit our stride. So very gracious of both of them. Before we go, we got to talk quickly about your concert at Lindenwood College uh, this coming Saturday. Saturday, yeah. What, 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 are fans, should, what should fans expect from this? Oh, they're going to hear everything. They're going to hear everything from uh, Shout, Twist and Shout, This is a Heart of Mine, It's Your Thing, Fight the Power, That Lady, Summer Breeze, Voice to Atlantis, so Between the Sheets. Choosy Lover, then on and on, you know. And, and then tell me about the UK tour. Oh, that's going to be coming up this summer in June. Looking forward to that. We'll be there about two weeks. And um, I think on some of that tour, we'll run into um, Paul McCartney and we'll run into uh, also Elton John. Fantastic. So we're looking forward to that. Fantastic. Ernie Isley, when's the book coming out? We're still working on it. <laughs> we're, we're, still, we're still on a daily basis. Adding chapters and pages. Lindenwood College this Saturday. Go see the Isley Brothers and also check them out in a city near you. Ernie Isley, thank you so much. Oh, it's a privilege and an honor. Thank you, man. Glad to be here.